and how you use this for um, making test garments, right? Oh. Like, okay. I like muslin? A, like, I have a prototype of a, of a, of a shirt. Oh, and yeah. I like, made it this fabric. Oh, yeah. And so I do that for many of the, like, the new projects where I'm not sure oh. of the sizes or stuff. And so I just make it like this. And then yeah. that project is just left as a prototype in this unbleached cotton. Uh. Um, and then you make your prototype with the end fabric so you don't mess up your nice fabric. I see. So I'm left with like a bin full of this fabric. Okay. I have unsewn, re-ironed, uh, and put together into eventually these oh beautiful, yeah right yes oh i love that yeah you did show me that oh right. i love these that are like pretty like straight yes. lines but i, I love have it others like well i have another one that i've also already cut so that's it's ready to be uh stretched onto uh a, a canvas Ooh. Onto, uh, oh, yeah, you can see the shadow yeah. so, anyway Alex. so i i've made yeah. some or different sizes and then I continue to have one two three that are ready to be stretched and I have a fourth okay. that I had already stretched and started sewing on but it was really difficult so I unstretched I took it off of the stretcher okay and then I have one that's like six meters long that I'm going to cut into okay. equal rectangles so they're all the same portrait sized uh rectangles Ooh. but what I want to do with them is originally I wanted to I just find this so beautiful. Like the lines that are that you see, it's like very much it reminds me of um uh Bonticou, what's her Lee Bonticou? Okay. Uh she used like metal structures and then covered them in, in canvas and they were like three dimensional paintings yeah. that were kind of like black holes and it just looked very like very ominous uh three-dimensional paintings with uh, wood and, and metal and canvas but this is just a flat flat inspiration of that but yeah. I wanted to build on this with like f with scraps but I don't I okay so I don't want to cover this because this is so beautiful these lines are so, so nice. gorgeous yeah but, like I don't this is too simple for me like this is this yeah. is not enough there's there's not enough here that says anything you know that this says nothing yeah this just says reclaimed canvas yeah i right? see what you mean uh mind you there are others that have like these intricate like uh waves i wish you could see this in person because some of these parts are just so so pretty like oh i can see it yeah yeah uh yeah. but you know like like this part right here I mean, yeah, it looks better Ooh. on the front because you do, you don't see the the extra, you just see like a, a line, yeah, which is really beautiful. I, I can't, I don't know how to show you. Anyway, yeah. Long story short, there's a lot of intricacies that are basically white paintings. Yeah, right. I and then some of them have like markings from when they were a prototype. Yeah, uh, like they have either uh, pencil marks. Yeah. Or ink stains or burn marks from the iron. It's just really, really beautiful in, in a yeah. very, very minimalistic kind of way. Right. Which I can very easily do like six or seven of these and just call those portraits. Yeah. Um, could. That's one idea. And I was like, well, me being a maximalist, I, 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 yeah. I am a maximalist. Like there's no, there's no other yeah. way. There's... You know, it could be very therapeutic to just be like, just do that. Yeah. Cut those, stretch those, make make a make a show of just those. Yeah. And maybe do something afterwards, you know, but I really want to show the beauty of that and see where that goes. Right. Then I also, I wanted to take them and start sewing stuff on them, like uh, application on them and, and sew them in ways that will make... Uh, a specific form or make it fall in yeah. a certain way but then i realized that like i don't have my scraps organized by color 
Okay. And it's too distracting. I would okay. need to make a monochrome piece. I, I cannot yeah. do this. This this is way too much. There's Makes a lot going on. There's way yeah. too much. I would need a monochrome piece. And so I'm kind of, I stopped working on this because I wanted to, eventually what I wanted to do was get a list from my millions of lists. <laughs> uh, take one of these as a sheet of paper and embroider fabric. Like, make the list out of, like, write it, uh, write the list in, in big pencil uh, scribble words, and then mm -hmm. use those lines to sew fabric onto, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the fabric would just fall and become like an abstract piece, but the sewn line would be words, actually, you know? Yeah. And then depending on the length or size of the fabric, it would fall differently, and then it would just, it would just be an experimentation of furthering a list and how, it would just deepen how much I love at working with lists yeah and it would have nothing to do with what the list is about it would have nothing to do with anything except making art through the idea that i want to use lists right yeah Ooh. but okay but then this whole this happened and i'm like oh. yeah i think it just that distracts from how beautiful the like surface is because that is really the like yeah. you really have a beautiful foundation yeah like it's oh, hard thanks. because <laughs> it's hard because like if you have a beautiful foundation like how do you make it more interesting or more like that's where you're kind of stuck right it's like yeah i mean is this enough right like and if it, it could be for part of it but i feel like no i feel like you could push it somewhere yeah, like, and I'm and that's where I'm kind of stuck. Like I don't know where to push it. Um, can I do that? Oh, yeah, I can do that. it might be. It, it since it's cotton, it might be interesting to do some dye work on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, because, I've never dyed. Yeah, dye you could do. Like I've been collecting. Well, you've done this before. Uh, rust, rust dyeing. Oh yeah, collecting yeah, yeah. rusted objects. Like it would be cool for you to collect things from a certain area and then like. From that, like dye the fabric, stretch it, and see. Yeah, that would be what... really pretty as well. And there's so many like natural elements that if you just like soak in hot water, and then you it'll absorb. Or you can do like cabbage dyeing, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's just a lot of materials that you could do. Yeah, and actually, that's I mean that's interesting because it stays within the I, the realm of textiles and yeah. Uh... Yeah, this this still this idea of like the production circle, the production chain of textiles, like it stays within that, and I really enjoy that because when I make my sculptures, it's all I'm using I'm using nothing but like tailoring techniques. Even yeah. to make these, it's like I'm tailoring these. Oh, so, which is why I find it kind of unfortunate that I would cover them, you know. But dyeing them, yeah. I I really <laughs> like the idea. Di the dye natural dyes are very translucent as well, right? It's not like they'll cover yeah. shit. That's really and they're nice. not super saturated. Yeah, they're really, really light. Cool. So you can layer them. Maybe even thinking about like dyes that are um, local to Belgium specifically, because I'm sure there's some that are. Yeah. How would you go are... about testing stuff? Like, would I just make little test things and do a bunch of different tests and like mark them or? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I, I think I have a little test sketchbook. Ooh. Yeah, this is kind of fun. So, like, to, like, I usually, like, will take, like, a natural dye. Oh, yeah, And okay. just, I'll paint it on paper because paper will absorb it in the color because it's a natural fiber. Yeah. So this will translate, you know, uh, I don't know, to what fabric might do. And like more yeah, like close like little, closely like, i guess strips. yeah 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 that makes sense yeah so like this is the mordant like you have to use mordant for it to attach and then this is like just layered dyes in different times which they all kind of look the same and then i used lemon juice to pull it up because i wanted it lighter oh okay. you know so you can play with a lot of different things and i'm happy to help 
help you with that because I know natural dyeing is kind of like this big can of worms actually once you get into it but yeah, yeah it's I've, fun though. I have no clue how to even like stick a dye onto something yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like I, yeah like, no I think well you, yeah, go ahead the first thing that comes to mind is uh mold there is mold growing on everything and I wonder if I can extract that somehow you know like there's mold growing in my backyard there's mold on my terrace there's like I can brush the terrace and get like a cup full of like green stuff well, that know, was on it I've used mold to dye fabric I don't know how it was actually in one of my pieces that got me into the school here so oh. you it like I had kept it in a I don't know, in an area that was not, was susceptible to mold and it just grew. So you could like, if you had mold in like a glass, like you could just shove the fabric in a glass jar with mold, it'll grow over a period of time. And then you could wash it, it would probably still be there, but I don't know how like oh. safe, safe that is. Cause then yeah. you have like, a mold I don't know, garment. but oh. yeah, mold, you should, I, you should experiment with mold. Like you could even just put a little piece of fabric near the mold for a specific amount of time right? and just crack it and say, I always like, you know, put a little post-it somewhere in my sketchbook, like, oh, the mold, the time, the date. And then when, whenever I remember that it's still there, I like go look at it. <laughs> so. uh, mm, Cause I'm thinking mold is wet. And what if like I were to put that piece in the oven for like two hours? Oh yeah, it would. It could kill the bacteria. Is right. that what you mean? Yeah, and it would actually. It would color it too. The oven oh. would color the fabric, which is also interesting. Oh geez, there's way so much. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Well, that be that be that's yeah. That can be a nice fun uh, experimentation. It's it's fun. You just have to go into it being like you have zero control over okay. the outcome. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which is fine. Yeah. So maybe just doing that fabric that you're using is so good for natural dyeing that it okay. just would be. Fun, easy, interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's also, yeah, also the string that I'm using is not very visible. And I'm sure that if I start dyeing stuff, it could be more visible. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I start some tests. Just do like the mold is good. Actually, even put the cotton into the oven and see what just as is and see what happens. Oh. That's, you could burn it. You could burn the fabric. Yeah. That I saw, I saw in a a gallery in in seoul and i was like that's cool it looked that they just put they just did holes uh -huh. and it looked so beautiful you could do it with incense yeah yeah, yeah i see what you mean you could dye it with smoke yeah i've smoke. seen that okay yeah you're right yeah well I, the thing is i don't want to take away from the marks that are already existing because they're so mm, subtle okay. so i wouldn't okay. want to make more marks i think if anything watermarks would be enough would be like more than what i would already want so yeah. that would be my limit is to just maybe use water and an agent to to dye it yeah. somehow, right? Like, I also thought when you were showing it to me, I also thought like watercolor, like oh, yeah, okay. spray, spraying it down, like dampening the surface and mm -hmm. then like creating like a watercolor on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to still continue doing the, finish the long piece that I have. And cut it into the shape that I want them. I want like to have at least four or five. I think I'll have it enough for, to have four or five different portrait sized canvases. Make the canvases and and then before stretching them, I'll I'll think about dyeing them or not, or dyeing one or two and and maybe not the lot, depending on the intricacies that I like or not and stuff like this. Yeah. But dyeing would be a very interesting a addition to the to the whole set. Like I feel like if I just have like seven. Uh, white canvases like this there's gonna be like people are gonna miss something there you know yeah yeah because it's just sort of like you see one and you're kind of done well yes know? and no because the shapes are the same are not the same but but yes i mean unless you're, of, unless it's yeah. like in a high art uh, gallery and people are expecting to just sit there for hours and not talk to each other yeah <laughs> yeah no. you know what I, mean? I, I mean you could have i think them as a piece like on their own is really nice too like i imagine that piece being on a really large wall like the wall is painted like a darker color so that artwork pops out mm, and that yeah. would be nice to me like yeah, yeah, that's sure. valid artwork for sure yeah. but if you want to like push 
but I also feel the same thing you're feeling where it's like, it, it just, it needs something. I'm not sure what. Yeah. I think I'm still going to do some dyeing tests to see. It could be fun. Yeah. They can also influence what I draw. Eventually. It could. But yeah, I don't know if that's too much, you know, like as a maximalist, I don't ever know when to stop. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Like, cause yeah, I guess what, what made you want to make those in the fir first place? Like these you canvases? wanted to save some waste or? Yeah, basically the idea was to reuse and make canvases that I would sell for people to paint on, but I found them so beautiful. I didn't want to sell them and I wanted to make art with them. Yeah. That's, that's basically it. Um, that's cool. And then the way you wanted to like, so you put them aw like together in a certain way. Was that driven by the scraps? Yeah, I did didn't, you... I didn't, yeah. um, I didn't modify the scraps much more. I just, I literally took weeks and weeks and weeks to organize them from size, from the smallest to the largest in piles. Yeah. So I had like piles of the tiniest scraps. Yeah. And then, uh, I took that pile of tiny scraps and made like a larger scrap. And then eventually it just became the bigger yeah. scraps and then I put all of them together. So it was just based on the scrap themselves. Interesting. Yeah. So I think maybe like creating another process similar to that, where it's like you're collecting objects and it could be either for sculpture or for dyeing mm -hmm. and maybe just like take it, arrange it and then let it like speak to you. Cause you're, you're like you're letting the material like guide you a bit uh -huh. so maybe just not think about what it is maybe go out into the world and collect a couple things and okay. if it's natural dye that's happening and you're feeling good about it then go down that route if it's collecting garbage to make sculptures or just collect maybe collect something and see what it says to you I don't know. No, that's, that's, that crazy? that's that, no, 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 no. That, that's actually the way. I mean, that's the process that I usually. That's my default process.